The film of the best-selling novel The Reader by Bernhard Schlink, starring British actress Kate Winslet, has been nominated for five Oscars. Another film shown at the Berlinale, Adam Resurrected, is based on the controversial novel of the same name by Israeli author Yoram Kanyuk. The film is a joint U.S.-German-Israeli production. Both are about life after the Holocaust, for those who survived and those who continue to live with the guilt. The Reader is set in post-war West Germany. It's a love story between an older woman, Hannah, and the high school student, Michael. He has his first sexual experiences with Hannah. One day, Hannah disappears. Eight years later, Michael sees her again. As a law student, he's observing a trial of female former concentration camp guards. My name is Hannah Schmidt. You joined the SS he recognizes the Hannah in the dock. She stands accused of being responsible for the death of more than 300 Jewish concentration camp prisoners. Michel is torn between the memories of his first love and disgust at the crimes Hannah is accused of. He suffers a crisis that puts his whole life in question. What are we trying to do? We are trying to understand. Look at that woman. Which woman? The woman you're always staring at. I don't know which woman you mean. I don't think it's a Holocaust movie, you know. Um, I mean, you could, you know, Schindler's List is unquestionably a film about the Holocaust. Of course it is. Um, you know, this for me is a love story that, of course, deals with the Holocaust, but it's a love story first. Do you love me? Should the Holocaust be used as the background to a love story? Director Stephen Daldry hopes to use the two protagonists to make the psyche of Germans after World War II more understandable. There are many, many films made about the Holocaust, and I hope and assume there will be many more films made about the Holocaust. Uh, most of those films are made um, from the perspective of, of uh, the victims, as is right, and very few films are made uh, with perpetrators as dominant characters, and this, in that sense, is a very unusual film, and therefore is bound to elicit a certain amount of uh, controversy. Is it possible to love someone capable of such atrocities? How do you deal with the shame and the guilt? Big questions. The reader was well received at the Berlinale by the author of the novel. Of course, an author has his own images in mind. He can't expect that the pictures he has in his head will be the same in the film. In a film you see other pictures, but they're good pictures. Adam Resurrected is the story of Adam Stein, a vaudeville performer from Berlin who survives the Holocaust. It explores his states of mind. In an Israeli sanatorium, Adam keeps hospital staff and fellow patients on the go with his grotesque capers. And he's plagued by recurring memories. Adam survived a concentration camp because the sadistic commandant enjoyed making him act like a dog. Adam escaped the gas chambers, but his family did not. We see how the Nazi commandant orders Adam to keep his head down and not look at him. How to respond to commands like a dog. Adam is praised for his obedience. And the prisoner never recovers from this trauma. Years later in the sanatorium, Adam comes across a scruffy boy who behaves like a dog. Although at first he's horrified, it's the beginning of a relationship. As I read the script, I came across this metaphor of the man and the dog. You know, the, the man who used to be a dog, who meets a dog, who used to be a boy. And that was so fabulous, so original, so powerful. More powerful than the Holocaust. Undo a who? Then, in my mind, it no longer was a Holocaust movie at all anymore. It was the story of this man and the dog and, and uh, how and insanity and, and how to overcome pain and trauma. Adam sees the two of them standing alone against the rest of the world. It is the meeting of two deeply tormented minds. Adam identifies with the boy. And as they gradually and painfully grow closer, they find a kind of healing. Even though the character goes through the darkest of times and the deepest of horrors, you know, uh, finally the opportunity of losing everything um, allows him for some important questions to be asked, like, who am I? You know? 
This film asks how Holocaust survivors managed to continue with their lives. Were they ashamed of surviving when their families did not? It looks at the states of mind of a generation that is slowly disappearing, marked by the greatest crime of the 20th century. There will always be 17-year-olds to whom we have to tell the story again and again, in whatever shape or form. And this is a question for art, how to find new points of view and new ways of presenting it. And I think that Adam Resurrected has a lot to offer. Two stories dealing with trauma, shame and guilt. Two strong films at the Berlinale. <laughs>